Okay, what's up everybody? We're gonna cover ORC OR really, really quickly. This is a speed round of ORC OR, okay? So the theory basically states that in the brain, in your prefrontal cortex, there are pyramidal neurons. We'll put this up here. Pyramidal neurons, okay? So there are pyramidal neurons inside of your prefrontal cortex. Inside of the prefrontal cortex, in the pyramidal neurons are microtubules. These microtubules essentially contain tubulin dimers, which are represented usually like this in the literature. Inside of the tubulin dimer, you have benzene rings specially oriented within tryptophan, phenylalanine, and other amino acids with aromatic rings. Inside of each one of those benzene rings, you essentially have a direction. Just to simplify it, you have a direction of uh, carbon van der Waals forces at the, in the carbon benzene ring. Inside of the benzene ring, you have a flickering back and forth. So sometimes these benzene rings are oriented in this direction. So you can see here, they're oriented in this direction, right? Like that. Or you can also have benzene rings oriented and switching orientation into the down position. So you might have uh, two hexagon representations of a, a aromatic benzene ring, and they might have the polarity on this side. You can see representing here. Boom, boom. Now you have a downward facing uh, benzene ring, okay? So you either have this direction or downward direction. Now, these are all oriented within the microtubule tubulin, the, the tubulin dimer. These are all stacked together in the very tight organization. Google what a, what a microtubule looks like if you don't know. The polarity differences within the, within the pyramidal neurons, which have highly structured microtubules, then create the emergence of these micro, micro gravity collapses of the super waveform, of the, the quantum superposition, essentially. This creates the generation, the basically the Bing experience, the momentary flash of consciousness. This conscious experience is uh, put together like a sequence of frames of a movie, right? Now, I feel inclined to draw what that would look like. If you have frames of a, of a movie on film, you have sequences of events. Now, this doesn't have to be visual representation. This can be sequence of thoughts, of feelings, of emotions, of pain, of pleasure, whatever it is, but it's discrete moments that happen so fast that it seems like a movie that's playing out in your mind, okay? So if we think of this as like a strip of film right here, this is a frame. Now, on the left, uh, this is frame number one, this is frame number two, and this is frame number three. First, you have someone who is on the left side of the screen, and they're walking this direction. Then they're in the middle, and then they're on the right side. So played together, you have one, two, three. One, two, three, and you have this constant switching of sequences of events. This is all indicated inside of these microtubules. So your conscious experience essentially takes place like a, like a fast shutter movie, like a fast frame rate movie inside of your prefrontal cortex. This is why things like anesthetic gases, which bind directly next to these aromatic rings with their own um, uh, with their own force, their, with their own van der Waals forces, not all of them have, not, they don't have aromatic rings, but basically benzene rings can uh, be interfered with through van der Waals forces. This is why there's a quantum effect within these microtubules. That's why you would consider orc -OR to give rise to the idea that your brain can actually have quantum effects giving rise to a conscious experience. That's essentially what orc -OR is. I think it's a pretty compelling theory in and of itself. Um, it's, everything needs to be tested more, uh, but for anybody who, especially on X and Twitter, uh, who's like, oh, this is a ridiculous theory, uh, th these are real things happening in the brain all the time. 
whether or not this exactly gives rise to your experience of consciousness, that's still a question that's open. But the fact of the matter is, is that you do have, you've got a brain, you've got a prefrontal cortex, you've got pyramidal neurons, stru highly structured with microtubules, which is a unique feature of a pyramidal neuron. So anybody who's like, oh, well, I have, uh, I have microtubules in my liver. Does that make my liver conscious? That's <laughs> like, like we've never heard that before, of course. Somebody, I think Daniel Dennett asked Stuart Hamroff at some conference and like a TEDx kind of conference back in 2009 or something like that. He's like, well, I've got microtubules in my butt. Does that make my butt cheeks conscious? It's like, no, dude, uh, th this, th this stuff is readable. This is why it's kind of, it's kind of annoying. It's like, if you don't actually read the theory and you just ask like debasing questions, of course, it's going to seem ridiculous. Ask smart questions, right? Learn a little bit about it. Hopefully this can be helpful. Um, but you've got pyramidal neurons. We know that you've got microtubules, you've got tubulin dimers, and you do have aromatic benzene rings, highly polarized and oriented specifically next to each other in this fashion. This can potentially give rise to a sequence of frames in these conscious collapse, collapse events. Um, and so that's it. That's a quick Quick explanation of ORC OR if you want to learn more. Um, I highly encourage you to at least Google it or ask your chat GPT uh, what is ORC OR? Can you explain it to me, etc. Um, so I hope that's been helpful and uh, I'll see you maybe on another one. Thanks. Bye bye.